Joker in that lane. However, uh, I do quite like the pickup of the Victor in that you have a lot of poke already uh, with this composition, right? You have your bowling balls, you have your Jason, now with the Victor, it also it becomes harder to engage on top of you. And I don't know how I feel about this Zaya. Uh, Zaya has kind of dropped in priority as a counterpick to the Kai'Sa. We can, of course, go for the Zyra Khan here. Mm. Uh, and actually, honestly, Zyra Khan, I, I kind of like. I think that the Nautilus is also perfectly fine. Just find it hard engage. And also take away a possible Nautilus from back here, because Kai'Sa Nautilus is also really, really strong. Yeah. As you mentioned, that hard engage is going to be really just super nice with the Nautilus. And we know Karia is good on those hook champions. Oh, yeah. So going to be throwing down the Nautilus here. Alistair is available, so in terms of a kind of squishy poke composition that DRX have on their side, that will offer some disengage for them. But I'm not sure if this is the composition to play that kind of style with. It's going to be interesting to see if they can make it work here as we are going to hop onto the rift for game number one. The blue buff. Doshik is going to take a lot of damage. Comes down to the smite, and Doshik will pick that one up. And with the priority in the top side, you can see that Khan is kind of getting baited into this fight. And Kingen still has Flash. He doesn't even need to use it there. That is really unfortunate. Kingen going to shut that down. And Solka, the other thing that that does, you know, it provides some safety for him. But also, it stops the other... Oh, man. I don't even know what to say about that. That's unfortunate. Kingen still in an awkward spot. Doesn't want to get wall ups here. He is going to try to flash it, but misses it. And uh, it ends up being a kill for Faker in the end. So a really nicely timed roam here. Faker's really trying to help all his lanes right now. Oh, which is pretty great. How's up, Yoshik's back again. They got the red buff here on the Udyr, and Yoshik is getting really aggressive. A solo kill in the jungle. Now we got a 2v2 down on the bottom side. The Killer Instinct comes in. Teddy's just trying to get out of dodge, but he cannot. As the straight up 2v2 kill will go the way of DRX. And now Becca just trying to body block here. He's got the stun coming up. It doesn't look like he can quite. Uh, edge out that second kill, but still a nice win for the bottom lane of DRX. It's a bloodbath, and of all people, Teddy and Carry are not ones you expect to lose lane, and T1 as a whole looking a little bit more shaky here, but... And we did see uh, Kuz able to take the Rift Herald. I'm pretty sure that's what why maybe why Kana was so low, possibly some, some Pokemon through air. We'll be able to march towards that top side, a dive on King, and could set up a first turret blood here, but Magna already being used. Still gonna come out here, gets that stun down and into the wall. He is just stun locked from 100 to zero. And that's the kill and the demolish proc and the Rift Herald that they can use to get an insane amount of damage onto that top turret. He's extending it for T1. I'd like to draw your attention. They have a Dom one esque stat here. Oh, King. And well, he's got his blast this time, but there's such a long lane that there's no reason to. He knows he's just gonna get run down by the Udir, so he just has to accept his fate again. Ahead. It was looking so doomed before, as now the engage this time around will be Feather Storms. Karia has his Aftershock proc, is gonna get the triple knockup, and now a TP coming in here from the Gnar. Well, that's fine, it's two flashes. Yeah, he gets the double flash, but at the same time, not able to get the stun as, ooh, nice engage here from Karia, trying to get on in now as Bao. But do they have the damage? It doesn't look like it. Now under the turret, the Chaos Storm not actually able to get any consistent damage there. And that means that T1 will get out of dodge, although Faker is going to take a shot to the face. And DRX will be able to push this turret. Now. Two against Teddy and Carrier now, not to a point where the matchup is a problem. There's a possible collapse onto Kana here. Still yeah. at Meganar, but I don't think this is going to end well. Kana's been having a fun time, but unfortunately, there have been some mistakes. And he is a bit out of position, but he's looking to turn it around now. He does not have Meganar, though. They do have the damage to blow him up. Cuz trying to get on top of Piosik here, going 1v3, as that hook is going to sail wide. Teddy not able to win that fight on Solka in the river, as Faker looking for the big wallop there onto the Alistair. And uh, he's going to do a nice amount of damage. Bowling Ball will sail wide, and nobody else is going to go down here, just Kana. And that's a painful one, because that means a second Drake here for DRX. And mounting here at 41, but um, I think King is uh, in trouble again. Yeah, well, with the teleport coming in here, they are really looking to bully this Jace down. And they're just going to wait until Kana simply pushes the lane. King and no escape for him, and he knows it. He's trying to do as much damage as possible before he does go down. So it's going to be on what? them to really land that pre-fight damage. 
As already the streak is started up, the bubbles not really landing. DRX have got a nice spread so far. As the Meganar is going to come out here, DRX may need to respect this. As the Paddle Star going to miss once again, Ingo's carry he actually misses, and they kill him, and the Nor ultimate hits nobody as well. As they flash away from that one, and now the front to back here from DRX is just huge. As they take down two, and T1 have to turn tail. They cannot fight this one. Teddy was not able to join this fight. And they're just looking for more, as they want to get more kills here. I feel like the oh, Infernal this. Drake would be good enough, <laughs> but... Uh, Okay, they okay. finally give up on that one, and now they're going to take the Infernal Drake. percent spotted, and the Nara Ultimate is one that you get 100% flash away from. It was too obvious of a setup from T1, it might work against the lesser team, but we've seen the DRX, this is Ooh. where they shine. At the same time though, if you pick up a Baron for it, it's just Soul Point, not Soul, so that's a trade you'll take as T1. You'll take it, we'll see if they can actually take down the Baron. We have the Teleport committed to here by Sulka. But with the Nautilus in that brush, that's very threatening for uh, Solka. He's actually going to ult on a PO stick, so there's no hope of the steal. They're looking for a follow-up engage, but the Meganar is coming on in here. Looks like they want to get in there anyway. DRX really looking to force this as Becca is going to go down. We get the sleep now on Kana, who is going to have to hop away. And a ton of damage coming in, but the exhaust is pretty huge. Kana this time able to land his abilities, just trying to sacrifice for his team as Faker Trying to do some follow-up damage, and everybody else is able to get away from there with the Baron buff intact. No, I am, uh, I'm not afraid. Like, we're getting excited. Teddy is not as the teleport. What? <laughs> Faker's angry, and you know what? No flash available for Bow. That's just a free kill. They're going to get one. Oh, uh, no, they don't know where he is. Come on, blind bubble, Faker. You can do this. You got this. Because it's pretty fast, but not fast enough. Flash is available to help us. Orion, you're low, and T1 cannot afford to lose this fight. I, if you give away Infernal Soul here, it might just be it might just be game over. We'll have to wait and see how this one goes, but no Mega Nar. Faker's low. The burst coming in. Can Cuz steal it is the question, and he will. Cuz will steal the Infernal Drake and give them a chance at winning this game. As the sleep will come in, not sure about this follow-up engage, but they do get the Drake at least and deny the Infernal Soul from DRX. And you can see the back off here, they're wanting to turn, they find Cuz, but he's just way too fast, that's not the guy you were looking for. And the Baron continuing to go down here. Just looking for this one, all five members of DRX just grouped up onto this. The sleep will come in, and they could look for this fight as Becca gets a huge knock up in the front line and Karia already dies. Although the damage does come out here, but take a look at Teddy, he's so low and he's just gonna be burst down by the Lilia. Do they have the damage though? Cuz is actually in that back line and Faker stays alive for the entire time. All the other carries on the side of DRX do go down. Really nice stopwatch though from Piotrzyk staying alive. This is such a close fight and Faker's gonna <laughs> take it down in the end with a double kill as T1 will pick up the ace. It's one at Campion Rain, and he just dies because he gets ulted into the wall and then Faker blows him up. As this might just be the fate of Sulka, although that bubble is going to miss. The damage not quite there. The flash though from Teddy is enough, and they nearly get Becca on the back side of this. T1 are just, they've got some nerves of steel right now. There is the spot. They know that this is happening. Poke is available. Yep. You can see DRX. Pretty hesitant to get on in here. We'll see if the Alistair, he gets knocked up out of the Hex Flash. Not sure if he was actually going to commit to that, but man, that just puts the nail in the coffin on that idea. As okay, we got some poke coming out here from DRX. Trying to stop them from coming on in here. Faker, a little bit of an awkward spot. In comes Bow, they're looking for the follow-up engage. They have enough damage to immediately take out Lilia and Faker. It's just stacking up the kills at this point in time. One of the two, because the other one will carry the fight. Really clean vision denial here from T1. They brought all the control wards to this push. And there is just nothing, there's, there's no way for DRX to see what direction Baker's gonna come from. So this is just like Zoe's <laughs> playland right now. She can do whatever <laughs> she wants. And uh, she's gonna do stuff like this. Two infernal drinks, that hook was a little bit doomed. Piotrzyk though, okay, he's gonna get the sleep, but he immediately dies. Zero follow-up from DRX. That's gonna be the front line going down. And T1 looks like they may have just opened up this game. 
and will be able to take this down unless we have the insane stop from DRX. The seven-man sleep from Pioshik there. Uh, jokes aside, you can't follow <laughs> up there. The front line is too big. Oh, no. Now they're just getting pounced on here. Bao not able to get out of dodge because he's just even going to live as Bao's doing some crazy things as the Kaisa does here in the late game. But at the end of the day, he goes golden and then he goes gray screen. Becca will survive, but at the end of the day, DRX will not. T1 picks up a huge win as, uh, okay, Jace <laughs> ends up being Jace, even after being camped in the side lane over oh, yeah. and over. It didn't matter. The damage he did in and out of the lane was too much. Obviously, Faker following up there with some crazy team fighting. Stop pick. <laughs> Zed? No. Zed or Bed? No, he, he wouldn't. No, we can't get excited about this. We're not allowed to. Until it's locked in, uh, we don't talk Come about on. others. Oh, no, he's just playing with us. No, it's going to be Come Bowie on. again. No, it's not happening. It's not happening. Yes. Uh, okay. <laughs> they let us wait till the last second. Yeah. And they don't give it to us. This, uh, of course, does make a lot of sense. The 2v2 is kind of awkward where you will be able, Ahsoka, to build just a lot of magic resist and then the consistent poke that comes out from the T1 bot lane. But let's see what happens here in game number two. As we will hop on the rift once again. Is it happening? Oh, it's happening. Oh, boy. No, no surprise here, guys. As the flash is all coming in, two from the side of T1. They're really trying to force this and not even gonna land that second spear. But they're gonna be able to get this proxy going here for Kana and make life difficult for King and to start off. And just immediately punish him as Kaz. Ghost is gonna come in here. He's gonna try to get him off the wall and with no flash available, it's a little bit awkward for Kaz with a flash over the wall now from Solka, who, oh man, he's gonna get kited out here. No flash on the Syndra. The flash comes in now from Faker. The sleep coming in, the damage will be there. First blood. To the Zoe, as Kana now is going to move forward. This is the Look veteran lineup, okay? True. These guys are like, instead of 17, they're like 20. But still, compared to Faker, everything. Well, yeah. <laughs> as we do have a tree down on the bottom side, Becca looks like he's just dead. Not sure how that one started, but still, it's a 2v2 kill, this time in favor of T1's bottom lane. So, again, as I mentioned, no flash for King and no escape. And that's just what that's going to mean. And Faker finds Pyoshik. I don't know if he can get any help from his team, but he's at least being annoying here. It's buttered. He's going to be helping out Faker here. As now we're looking to turn the tides potentially onto Kana, who does not have his Dominus. That's going to be the Gnar into the wall. We got the Horsey on top of him, and there's no escape for him now. So at least DRX is able to trade a kill back in very similar fashion. I like how and kill the Meek there at the end to maybe sustain up for a little bit longer. Ooh, gonna miss on that one, but he lands the bubble. No flash available for Solka, and with the Everfrost, you might just go down. And yes, he does. As now the ultimate comes out here from the Hecarim, the flash a little bit optimistic there. He had Karia coming in, so probably on the comms. Heard the shouting and thought maybe there was a chance, but it's just a trade of kills and a denial on the Rift Herald for DRX. He's even gonna hold on to his ultimate there, so. Pretty fine as Karia just taking a beating here from the cow. Actually trying to turn this around. He's going in. Look at him. He's going 1v2 and he sets up the kill now for Faker. And that is the presence you need. You're feeling very good. Oh, not again. Well, he's just. Even Cuz is getting in on this one. Faker's like, yeah, you can have it this time. Um, I'm fine with that. And he still has the Rift Herald, guys. Listen, so. I, think, uh, I think this is where the trumpets start playing and. Uh, <laughs> Like, oh, um, this is not the game you're looking for. Uh, as DRX, it was a very hard fought game number one. Yeah. And honestly, this is why we don't see Renex and Nidalee go through drafts, right? Actually, you're right. You, you know, you've actually been improving. I, I really know, appreciate I that. Roy you know? Jenkins. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Cuz is actually just looking at Solo King in. Gets the flash available. That's a nice little exhaust that Faker was able to pick up. Ignite comes in and uh, more sparkles. Is just barely able to Maybe get a him. A bit more in Pioshik with the Q spam can get some damage done, but oh boy. Oh, he's gonna find him there. And we have the stun lock coming in. See you later. Spear from miles away for huge amounts of damage. Now Becca's gonna have to ult here. 
and it's just chaos on the rift. Nobody can get away from T1. Becca not even able to get through the wall, and that's two free kills right before the Mountain Drake. And Karia is just laughing at you. I mean, this is impossible for King and Bound to do anything, even to the support. Do you think they have any idea? I oh, Faker checks it! And now, actually, Karia might die here. He's got the Aftershock going, though. Will he survive through three people shelling onto him? Looks like the answer will be no, but it doesn't matter. He survives for long enough, and everybody else on the side of DRX will die. Teddy 1v1-ing the Gnar here. The ultimate does come in, though, but the burst is not there. Faker's able to come in and help him out. And now it's almost a 10,000 gold lead at 24 minutes, as T1 will casually take the bar. Mood for fun and games. Faker sniffing that one out. And as you said, yeah, collapsing on this, <laughs> this Leona. <laughs> um, I, don't, I don't know about that one, uh, Chief, as uh, they throw everything into him, it doesn't actually do anything. Cuz is there, Faker is there, the teleports are immediately channeled, and as as soon as it's not like a 5v2, uh, as, as the Rx, you know, like, this is over, right? We're, we're so far behind, there's just no way that we're going to make this work, as I'm pretty sure Bao just blows up. Oh, here. so this is why they didn't have a Kai'Sa. <laughs> I see. Oh. Okay, good to know. Yeah. Uh, he does cleanse, but he doesn't flash. I mean, there wasn't really enough time to react to that. Oh, oh, Observer's at it again. Where is everybody? They're all here in the brush again. And trying to fight from 10,000 gold down, but it seems like there are enough members of T1 here to get the damage done. The Xenoblade is going to miss, but it just doesn't matter. They're smurfing him. We got the triple kill for the Zaya. Can we set up the Penta? 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 No. Aww. No, this isn't Ruler. No. <laughs> they just keep doing this. <laughs> I can't believe it. Oh, trying to burst down Faker. He's got the W flash, and he is going to go down. So they do kill him. And the unofficial Penta comes in. The triple double over to Teddy on the Zaya. So there you go. As their wallets are so incredibly large right now. Stacking up the cash. In goes Kana. Vine Solka. See you later. Puts him in the ground. And that's going to do it, guys. 26 <laughs> minutes is... Let him live. Come on. How long it takes. We have the feathers coming out. We have the spears and all that fun jazz. As they're going in for this one. And they do pick up the kill. And as it is fun and games here, Teddy is still looking for kills under the fountain here. As uh, there you go, he's even going to survive. T1 dominate them in also game number two. We know that they can perform. We know that they are incredibly strong. And yeah, that is a very different game. A uh, very different game here coming out from Teddy, who this time got to play uh, in a composition that actually, you know, wants to get close to him, wants yeah. to kill him, and then all of a sudden those numbers look very different.